We've taken some punches. We've taken some shots on the chin. We've had decisions questioned. We've had people in other markets go, what the hell are these people doing? It's not what the MLS is about. It's not what soccer is about. Those guys, gals on Series 157 money talking about Charlotte. When we talk about Charlotte, North Carolina, we're gonna talk about 74,000 in that stadium on Saturday, how we brought it, how we overcame all the bullshit. As you take it in on Saturday, thank each other, thank the fans, thank guys like this holding up mics, everyone who's covered us. I'm so proud of everybody here. MLS regular season record is 72-5. The MLS total record for an MLS match is 73-19. Our goal was obviously 74 to, to break that. So We are happy to say that this morning we have surpassed that. We have sold 73,500 tickets. <laughs> And Friday, I want everyone to take the day off. Don't look at your phone. Don't answer emails. Detox. There was about seven or eight of us that were part of the other football project. It was a sort of after school project. We met twice a week um, at a, in an empty old dining space on the 400 level at the stadium. And we talked about this hypothetical soccer team that could potentially be playing in Bank of America Stadium. So now it's my pleasure to welcome Charlotte to Major League Soccer as our 30th team. The success of our team is going to run in parallel with the, with the success of Charlotte, with the Carolinas, with people moving in here. You know, Charlotte's young, it's thriving. A really important part of our club is it's something that people can latch on to as soon as they move here. We can be that real tried and true connection to Charlotte when someone's trying to immerse themselves into this community, they can adopt Charlotte FC from day one. I think when I started in February, there were six people that were dedicated Charlotte FC personnel. So this city is full of people looking for something that will bring them together that they don't already have an affiliation with another club. And we've seen the MLS uh, be able to do that in other cities. And we had a feeling it would work here based on the number of transplants and millennials and, and the Hispanic population in this city is massive. So we tried to pull all that together and say, this is your club and we will build it with you. We're not gonna build it for you. everyone look um, this this collective group has done an, an insane job to build what's going to be the biggest party uh, in MLS on Saturday I grew up spent most of my time about 13 plus years in Italy uh, before moving to the US this sport is, is is a part of my culture I grew up playing it breathing it watching it oh. Donnie. Good to see you again, brother. That's my museum. Where? Yeah. Look at it. I ended up getting new shoes out there last My time. responsibility is to work, listen, and hear what our fans are saying, bringing that back across every department at the club to make sure they have a voice inside of this club, that they know that they matter. When we open up Bank of America Stadium, that experience is going to be so reliant on our fans. So it's really important that they're first in everything that we do. While they all represent different things, they have some different values, different people, different identities. They're all coming in with a singular focus and putting on an amazing experience and supporting the club. And so what you'll see is, is a little bit of that Europe, South America. So that's what I love about our supporters. It's, it's really gonna be a little bit of a melting pot.
My name is Mariano. I'm coming from Argentina. My name is Guillermo Carrillo. David Gussler from Charlotte, North Carolina. I got involved with Mint City Collective. I joined on the whim. I played soccer and grew up in the Carolinas. We all came here at different times in our lives. And, but what we have in common is that we've grown here. Heidi Underhill. I'm originally from Burlington, Vermont, but I've been in this area for 20 years now. Like everybody else in the United States, they have a soccer team. In Carolinas, we, we don't have it. And like, this is our passion, you know, like we've been living here for 20 years and we like, we're going to buy to this stadium, you know, like children sing and we don't have that. We started from South Carolina Spurs which was a supporters group in South Carolina. And my boyfriend was very involved in that. He was tragically murdered in a home invasion. He actually died protecting us. Legend, he's a hero. The only thing that I was feeling comfortable about or felt like I wanted to get out of bed for was to continue his legacy. Having that and then having this group that just embraced me and took care of me and became my family is what dragged me out of a depression and I'm able to keep his legacy alive, which is what keeps me going. I feel this, you know what I mean? It's my home. It's Okay, whatever, this is my home, this is my team now. You know, it's where we raise our kids, it's where we have our families, so it means everything. I have been waiting for this day now uh, for two years, since 2020 when, when Breton was talking about it and put down a deposit for our tickets before the club even had a name. We're ready with the chance, we're, it's just very emotional. There's been a lot of hard work that went into it. Ready to set a week attendance record on Saturday. Just how are you feeling about that? How are you feeling about the team? Amazing. <laughs> awesome, like people say here. <laughs> I'd like to go ahead and introduce you to the first ever Charlotte Football Club coach. I don't you don't realize how difficult it is <laughs> to build something from the scratch. In a normal club, you just need to add three, four players. But here, we needed 30. We looked at the many, many players, and every single name from Messi and Ronaldo down were mentioned to us and suggested to us. We always wanted to kind of build the blocks and build through the kind of spine of the team, but we always waited for announcement of the, of the head coach to be able to kind of finish the building of the team. We have a so-called shadow list, for example, where we basically put on, on each position of, our, of, uh, of the team, uh, 11 players of the team, we put the five players for each position that we're monitoring at every given moment. And some of those players, of course, end up in, a, in a maybe bigger, wealthier clubs or different leagues. So we lose them, so we replace them with the next player. You want a hungry players, you want a players who want to win, who are actually very much into the, hey, this is not my last bus stop, this is my first bus stop. I think not many people can say, you know, they grew up in a city and playing a professional in that city as well. So I kind of want to be that person to, you know, for little kids that are growing up here in Charlotte uh, to look up to and say, hey, like, he's done it. You know, why can I not do it? It's a surreal feeling now and my family is obviously so happy. It's been pretty unique so far. Um, obviously, we have a lot of cultures in the locker room that maybe you don't see in every single team. I mean, Americans in the team, we have Spanish speakers, we have Portuguese speakers, we have Polish speakers. So it's about one thing, it's about being a team. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It's just so exciting to be here. Another historic opening of a, another MLS team. And the history part is really important. We'll have the largest uh, regular season soccer crowd in MLS history, and I've been told uh, likely the largest uh, 
crowd in the world uh, this weekend. So uh, a long time coming, but we're really happy to be here in Charlotte. One, two, three. fans, the biggest crowd in MLS history, we're underway. Just something you can't even describe. Like I'm walking on the field, and when you have 74,000 people behind you at your home stadium, a stadium I've been growing up, you know, watching games in, and obviously I've never seen it full in my life. So to have it full for a game that I'm a part of, it's it's special. It's one of those games where if people give it a chance, they fall in love with it. So it's sort of an "I told you so," and I, that that that's a lot of what we're going to see this year. I'm anticipating that. I'm excited about that. We want to be something that any expansion club, whether it's MLS or maybe any other sport, they're going to call us first. We're going to be on the top of that list to call and say, hey, how did you guys pull that off? How did you get to where you are? We want to be where you are in five years as well. We have such an opportunity to make an impact on this region as it grows. We have too many good people here. We have too many people that are in love with Charlotte, in love with the Carolinas, in love with soccer, what it can do, what it represents, what we can do for the community. Yeah, I want to, I want to have a trophy case and a nice, nice training facility to show off in five years for you. I'll let you take a picture.